Hey, today I'm gonna to teach you how to strum like my bloody Valentine using the tremolo bar. So we'll take a look at my technique and what works for me, and we'll also take a look at Kevin Shields and what he does. If you haven't seen his interview with Fender, I highly recommend checking that out too. There's a lot of useful information in there. Anyways, let's take a closer look. All right, before we begin, let's talk about the concept of what we're doing. We're using the tremolo bar to bring our guitar chords out of tune and then back into tune. And if you watch the interview with Kevin Shields and Fender, he talks about how when he plays 50% of the time, he's out of tune, but it doesn't really matter as long as our guitar resolves back into being in tune. So for example, if I just play you a chord and I use the technique here where I exert some force on the tremolo bar in order to bring the chord out of tune, as long as it returns to tune, your brain isn't really going to get too confused by what's going on. So if I go like this, and then I bring it back to tune, it sounds good. And so his theory is that our brain is just usually collecting the information that kind of comes at the end of the thing and the out of tune Ness as we play just kind of creates this interesting effect. To me, it's kind of like an imperceptible drill or if somebody was using a leaf blower or something like that. So again, we go out of tune and then we go back into tune. In terms of the pure mechanics of what I'm doing for my technique, it's all about resting the tremolo bar in my palm. So I use the tip of the tremolo bar right here as my contact point. I rest it in my palm and then I just grip the, the, uh, the pick as if I was playing more more normally. And so what we want to do too is be nice and loose. So the entire time I'm making this motion here, I've got the tremolo bar in my palm. I'm not pushing down too hard. I'm just using it when I feel like I need it. If I'm stressing some of the downbeats, then I'm, I'm laying some pressure into the tremolo bar here to create that effect. Another thing that you want to do is keep this tremolo bar nice and loose. So don't have it too tightly locked in. Otherwise, it's not really going to be able to come for the ride, which is essentially what's going on. Now, when you are strumming, there's a bit of an art to how you want to rhythmically time it. So it's not like you're just going to push down on the tremolo bar the entire time that you play. You kind of want to use it as if you were playing shots, almost. So when I play a line like this, uh I'm putting emphasis on some of these heavier beats here. So I'm like, I'm pushing, I'm kind of diving down into the chord and then I'm releasing. But every single note of that rhythm there doesn't have the same amount of pressure or dynamic on it. Otherwise it would sound a little different. I guess it would be like, well, if I, if I have the same amount of pressure, then I'm never going back into tune, which would sound terrible. So you need to kind of time it so that you have points where you can go back in tune. I think a really good way to get started with playing in this kind of way here is to start with a quarter note rhythm. And when you're playing the rhythm, you wanna use the out of tune scoop as something that's almost like a pickup into the downbeat. So I go like wow, 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 wow. So kind of like uh And you want to experiment with how much pressure you want to put down. I think less is more is generally better. You can dive down a little too much. That can sound a little bit strange. Just record yourself and listen back to it. And that can help you to get a sense of what is working and what isn't working. I just want to mention a little bit more about uh, my pick rip before we talk about Kevin Shields. So I'm holding my pick with two fingers here. The uh, pick is locked between the thumb and the index finger and my pick fits along the side of my index finger here and then I close my thumb on it. I have these fingers kind of just resting out in the open. I mean, when I'm normally playing, I have my pinky contacting the pick card here, but I don't do that when I'm strumming. So I'm just loose like this uh, and strumming away. As for Kevin Shields, the technique is fundamentally similar. It definitely sounds the same, but he holds his pick and he has a different kind of hand position in terms of where he's contacting. So for him, he has like a George Benson grip, which is when you contact with two fingers on the pick right here. So your middle and your index, and then you close it with your thumb. You kind of supinate your wrist so that the inside of your forearm is showing and you're kind of tilted more upwards like this. Now for me, this is a really awkward way to strum and play. So I don't really like it, but I know some incredible guitarists who totally make this work. In terms of where he's contacting the tremolo bar, it kind of seems like he's more in the middle of the guitar here. He's got a really loose wrist when he plays. I'm not sure if he's totally squeezing down on the tremolo bar. I, I'm pretty sure he's, it's just loose in his hand. That's really something that he emphasizes is that uh, sense, of loot, uh, sense of looseness. So anyways, that's the technique and uh, yeah, hopefully it helps.
All right, so there it is. Hopefully you sound like my bloody Valentine now. Just want to mention, if you want to support the channel, be sure to leave a like, make sure to subscribe. If you want to support more directly, you can sign up for Patreon. As little as a dollar a month will give you access to some bonus content, guitar tabs, lesson notes, chord diagrams, other things like that. Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.